Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for what God is doing. God has been pouring out His Spirit in powerful ways. Revival is here. Church is now here. That's right. Revival is here. Church is now here. I'm thankful for that. We meet Sunday nights at 6.30. I am the senior pastor of Revival is here. Church. I am Pastor Chan Smith. So come out and be a part of what God is doing. God has been really pouring His Spirit out of God has been doing great things. People are getting healed, set free. Let me tell you something. Big testimonies. God has been doing really good things. So come out and be a part of what God is doing. I know you want to. So just come out and taste and see that the Lord is good. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Whew. You can get the location at revivalishere.org. So Go there, revivalshere.org, and get the location and come out and be a part of what God is doing. I'm going to play for you a service from Revivals Here Church. God poured His Spirit out, so watch it and get blessed, and God will touch you during the, this program. And I will be back at the end of the service to pray for you and lead you to Jesus and have some more information for you. Thank you, and God bless. Jesus, glory, hallelujah. Name of Jesus, Amen. Glory, Hallelujah. Glory, Hallelujah. Sometimes it's good to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> Glory, Hallelujah. Just soak God in. Just soak God in. Just, just. It says, "Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good." Amen. So, drink him in like you're drinking a glass of water. I know some of you might think it's silly, but you got to drink God in just like you're drinking a glass of water. You'll feel it. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I rebuke you, Satan, out of this area in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. You demon of religion, I rebuke you out of this area in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Mm, glory, hallelujah. God's given me a good uh, sermon. I, he hasn't allowed me to preach tonight. But he's put it on my heart to preach. It's about curses. I know a lot of people listen to the podcast. A lot of people. And I, I heard some good response off of the TV network from it. And God wants to uh, break curses off of people. In this area, there's been this generational curses that's been on people, and it seems like you just can't quite get that breakthrough. It's like you can't quite get that dream that that you've been reaching out for. It's like every time things go good, something happens and mess it up. And it could be a generational curse that's been on your family. And uh, sometimes an alcohol can bring a generational curse. There's a big prominent family that had a curse on their life because of alcohol. There's two families, that, that big name people, that their whole families have had like this curse on them. It's like some a lot of us died young, accidents and things. It could be a curse that becomes on your life through alcohol, and that can bring a the pharmacia spirit, the, the curse. Of drugs and alcohol, like the next generation can get into drugs, and then the next generation will get worse. And it's a generational curse. There's a lot of sickness, <clears throat> cancer, and a lot of things that be because of a curse. Like there's a proven that there's a gene, there's a defective gene that will cause in different cancers. It's a generational curse. And God has really given me that good uh, teaching on that. And He doesn't want His children to be under a curse because when we are born again, we are, we are free from that curse of the law. Amen. And we need to break that curse off of us. And we need to be mindful of that in the spiritual warfare. And we need to know why things are, are happening, you know, why that you just can't seem to get that breakthrough. We just, you know, you just can't seem to, seem to get that blessing. Or it's like when things go good, it just, everything falls out underneath of it. It could be a curse. It's been on the families. 
And sometimes the whole families have that problem that you just can't get a breakthrough. It's just thing after thing happening. And it's very important that we know these things. And God has given me some really good teachings about that and also about the wise counsel. We always hear about the, oh, you must have counsel, you must have counsel, and all these things. You always hear this, but it's the thing is the Bible says wise counsel, Amen. not all counsel. Amen. Amen. That's the key. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because if what if someone that has wise counsel for you, they will ask to give you that counsel. They will not force their counsel upon you. If someone says, if you don't listen to me, my counsel, your ministry is going to fall, don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. That's a Jezebel spirit. Yep. I've heard many people go from church to church. Come on now, I'm going to preach it to you. Yeah. Go church to church. Right. They say, God told me to say something to the senior pastor. If they don't listen, then the church is going to fall. That's from the devil. Amen. That's unwise counsel. God give me that teaching. That's really good teaching. That's important. When someone tells you stuff, that you have to change this, you have to change it. If it's bothering you, don't listen to it. Mm -hmm. That's unwise counsel. Mm -hmm. Don't let that hold you back from your call. Many people are getting held back on that call because of that. Because people come against them. So are you too loud? Or, you know, you too... Uh, you dance too much before the Lord. Or you do this or do that. Don't listen to them. You worship God. You do the call of God is placed on you. Don't listen to Jezebel, that grumpy spirit that people have that try to hold you back. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because God wants you to worship Him. Amen. Amen. You can have a curse of barrenness on your life if you make fun of someone for worshiping God. Mm -hmm. There'll be a barrenness. David's right. wife made fun of him and there was a barrenness that fell on her. That's right. And David said, I'm going to do it even more just because you come against me. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's good to be stubborn. It's really good to be stubborn in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's a gift. It said the righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. Take a stand. Yes. Like David, he said, I'm going to worship God even more. Amen. Be determined. Yes. Amen. And that Caleb anointing. We need a Caleb anointing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that mountain. People might try to discourage you. Say, oh, you can't do this. Oh, you do. Oh, you, you can't do this. You, you don't have an education for that. If God has placed it on you, you do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Be determined. Say, I'm going to do it. I don't care whether you like it or not. Even if a pastor comes against you. You do what God has called you to do. I'm not going to come against you, and they're not going to come against you. That's right. But I'm just saying. But sometimes pastors can get a little jealous. Mm -hmm. We don't need jealousy in the body of Christ. No. 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 Amen. We don't need that. There's a jealousy to <laughs> anger, it seems like. It's creeped in. Like it's Jezebel's spirit, it's, and this Leviathan spirit, it's creeped into the church. God has given me good teachings on that, some really good teachings. By Jezebel and Leviathan. I'm, I preach those sometimes, but it's kind of creeped into the church where we don't allow God to move. We don't allow people to be used by God. We don't allow the prophetic to flow. Which, the prophetic, do not use the, the prophetic to run someone down. Do not use that. I've seen people use the prophetic. I've seen it in a service. There was a minister and someone pointed out a minister from that church was preaching and it's a visiting minister was there and they said that this person, they didn't know this person was a minister, said they's backsplitting and all that, they need to do this and they need to do that, then the, it was so much confusion, the prophetic word, it was just so much confusion there and uh, that's not from God God will not point you out directly in front of everybody and say you backslid and that's not from God to expose you like that Try. So, uh, I just wanted to point that out about prophetic. I encourage prophetic, the real prophetic. I encourage that. And I love that when when it's encouraging people, because the real prophetic will encourage you. God wants to encourage His people. He doesn't want to pull them down. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, that's different. He's the Holy Spirit's not going to come out in this audible voice and. Uh, so, uh, to everyone and say, you have done this, you know. 
He, he does that. He convicts you. And, or if he does, he will do it. If he does speak through someone, it will be in private. It won't be in front of everyone. So uh, that's, I just wanted to share that. Because, you know, it's really good we have prophetic in the church. And this is not my sermon. But when we have prophetic in the church, there will be new life. Like it says in Ezekiel, the dry bones prophesy to those bones, mm -hmm. and they shall live. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot as in the church today. There's a dead, dead, yes. dry bones in the church, mm -hmm. and when they don't have prophecy, it's dead. I speak in tongues. I'm a proud tongue talker. I have been for a long time. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. And I, you know. Every, it's for every church and every denomination. Everyone that's born Amen. again Amen. and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. That's right. I want, let me go into that a little bit because we want to get some good foundations in the revivals here at church. When you get born again, like I've said before, it just gets your foot in to get you ready for the blessings. It gets you right. You are a new person, a new creature. You don't get, you're not completely immersed in a in the Holy Spirit until you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's a traditional teaching in the Pentecostal church. And when you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you come, it's always evidence, it's always tongues. People say otherwise, but the very first time it was tongues. So that's what I'm going to preach. Amen. That's, that's right, brother. And, but there's also, was not really, a third, well, you would call almost call a third, but it's not really a third. It could be a third, three through one thousand. The times of refreshing, you get refilled in the Holy Spirit. Amen. A refilling, and like there was a time um, when they was all together worshiping God, and I believe that's after they got on them. It was going to lock them up and said, uh, "Don't you preach in that name." And they come back and they was praising the Lord. I believe it was right after that. But they was all together praising the Lord, even the apostles. And the building shook, and they was all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. But they was that was a refilling for some, and some I believe they got baptized for the first time. Some yeah. got a refilling. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's important to get a refilling. Amen. A refilling, and uh, that really goes along with teaching. The first uh, thing that God has given me about. Uh, oil and the lamps. And I've heard someone say falsely, which I'm not against having an intimacy with God. I'm not against that. We need to have an intimacy with Jesus. We need that. But the oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. Someone said that represents intimacy. That's a false teaching. That's leaving out the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of teachings that sound good, but they leave out the Holy Spirit. They try to explain the way the Holy Spirit because that's where the power comes. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says, you, you, you shall receive power after the Holy yes. Spirit Amen. has come upon you. Yep. Yes. Amen. That's what the Word says. So the devil loves, loves teachings that leave out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When we talk about oil, it's about the Holy Spirit. I, I believe anointing with oil. We know in prayer calls, I got some king's oil. I didn't bring it tonight. But I have some king's oil that's Exodus 30. But they leave a stain on me. So I don't really like praying for people on the forehead or anything. Because it will, I mean, it's got cinnamon and stuff in it. But it's, it's just a, it's a symbol. When you know it in someone, and oh, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And in Matthew 25, it's this parable of the wise and foolish virgins. I know everyone has heard this. It says, it talks, Glory, hallelujah. Praise Thank Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. That's not stage fright. No. <laughs> <either. laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. You know, God spoke to me a long time ago when I was a young man. This now see to come to pass. So you know what? You keep on to that dream that God has given you that vision. Yeah. It's just now starting to come to pass. God yeah. spoke to me. He, he said, I'm going to move when you preach. 
I'm going to touch people when you preach. Praise God. And they give me some requirements. Is I have to get out of the way, but be able to stand and minister and not take the credit. Well, the problem I had was about being able to stand and minister. Because <laughs> when God fell on me when I was younger, I had a hard time uh, standing. I remember one time Charles Wayne and I still had to pack me in the house because I was drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> For several hours. I was a uh, bad shape. He was the talk of the family. Dad, uh, Dad didn't know what was going on. <laughs> no, me either. I was a bad shape. <laughs> I, many times God has just whammy me. I mean whammy, you know what I'm talking about. I got like God whammy in people. I like to say whammy. I want God whammy everyone here and don't feel hindered either. I know one time me and my grandmother I was, I has been 16 because I was driving. We was at the Carrollton Family Worship Center and God hit me and I believe it was the same time, same place it was before when he drove us, when he took me home. No, they was at uh, Children of the King when we carted you home. Was it? Yeah. See, I don't remember how I dropped the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but me and my grandmother was at the Family Worship Center and we both got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Oh. And I drove back from on 71 and I don't know how I got home. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good time in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We went to Rodney Howard Ground meeting down in Lowell and God whammed us there. <laughs> and uh, God just really poured His Spirit out. I had a... Which I love that. But I had the problem being able to stand and minister. I said, Lord, if you hit there in the service like this, I don't know how I'm going to minister. He used to hit me. Well, I feel like it's literally like I got struck by lightning. I mean, I'm telling you, it was so intense, I thought I was going to die. I mean, I'm not just... You imagine grabbing hold of an electric fence, and it, and it shocks you. And then God used to hit me that way. I couldn't sit still, ice cream and holler and everything else. And I'd be during the service and God just he just whammed me and just sucked service through me. And the other people would feel it around me. They, it was it was a real genuine thing. And the other people would feel it and they couldn't even sit beside me. Praise God. And uh, God just he touched me. And I've seen people, I've seen this with my own eyes. One person I, this was a leader in uh church in Florence when God sent revival there. I used to go on Friday nights there at a river meeting. And uh, of course John Arnott preached there. John Gilpatrick, I've heard him preach there too. Randy Clark, I've heard him preach there. All, all, well, I don't think Rodney Howard Brown came. But this was a leader. His, in the palm of his hands it would be oil. It would appear in his hands. I saw it right in the palm of his hands. I learned to saw it. I mean, I was sitting right beside him. I saw what happened. There's another man with gold dust would appear on him and on his skin. He couldn't wipe it off. It appear on him when God would fall. He does. God does different things to people and manifest in different ways. Amen. I see people just God would touch them, and you know it's God because they no way people can do this on their own. It's a sign and a wonder. That's right. He points to Jesus. Because it'd be uh, people that don't believe that the, there is a God, but when they see this stuff, that they, they came down. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That's true. God's going to do some amazing things through this church, through revivals here. God's going to bring some people in. He's going to, we're going to grow. We're going to encourage uh, people to go out. When it, when it really grows, they send people out to uh, Kenya and India to have services and things. They asked me in India to come over there. Man, I've been in communication with. I don't know how you pronounce his name. It sounds like a. I mean, it looks like Sand Deep. That's what it looked like his name is. But I mailed a, a DVD of the service to him, and I shared this with you already. But he was so hungry, he just wanted us to. He not. He didn't ask for any money. But he wanted us to send a DVD of the service so he can play at different places. And he translated it for them. Right. And pastors in India. And they felt the Holy Spirit. And uh, mailed a DVD and a CD to Kenya, Africa. And a little revival broke out there too. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, people's getting touched. And uh, that's what it's about. It's just bringing the presence of God Amen. to them. It's about which when you bring the presence of God, you bring in the love of God. Amen. 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 And it's about and God put this vision, a dream in me. I haven't shared this. He told me, and then time God told me all these things. That I, I'll be, be honest with you, I didn't believe them, but I knew it was from God. From God, but it was about me, so I had a hard time believing it. You know, if it's for someone else, you would say, yeah, I believe that. Mm -hmm. But he said that under me, people was going to go out all over the world. I didn't see how that, that would happen. But that's what God showed me. And it's, I mean, you, have to, you need to encourage people. And don't get jealous. I've seen pastors where they say they encourage people, but, but when people start flowing, they get jealous. I've seen there's a jealousy that comes in their heart. And they uh, try to discourage you. They'll talk about you behind your back. I've seen this happen. I mean, I, I, mean, I didn't hear about this. I saw it happen. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to discourage you. I want to encourage you. And bring people in. God wants to uh, raise up a young people that's going to be so on fire for Him. Amen. He's going to raise them up. To be a beacon of light. God's going to send a revival to Hollywood. He showed me that he was going to send revival to Hollywood. And if you go on the Roku, the area, there's a lot of people, a lot of people in the California, Hollywood area. That whole, there's a bunch of dots around that whole area, different cities that are going to the revivals here, TV network, and the Facebook page and stuff. They're looking. And I haven't, I don't know anybody in Hollywood, so I haven't said, hey, look. Watch this. That's, it was just, that's just God confirming what He said. And uh, I don't mean to keep going on and on. But I just felt that to share these things about just reaching out to people. And then when it grows, we're going to try to do reach out in different areas. But let's go into a Matthew 25. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were, were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no, no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there shall not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore for you. No, neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. That's talking about oil Amen. that represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've got some that believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and some don't. That's right. And that's really for, uh, goes for this day. It talks, that's right before the coming of the Son of Man. You've got a group that doesn't believe and a group that believes. Mm -hmm. If, we, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's for now, and I Amen. encourage you to get it. Amen. Don't feel scared to come up to this altar and pray during when I'm preaching. If you feel God tugging at you, they'll get it. He wants to touch you. Don't be afraid. God wants to touch you. Just because I'm preaching, to, you know, I, I don't tell God He can't move when I'm preaching that i got to preach. I'm not like that. God can move anytime He wants. But it's important that we have enough we have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We need to get filled up. Amen. 
and get refilled and refilled and refilled and refilled and refilled. I like I like calling some some meetings renewal meetings. I like that. They said that you get, they called renewal meetings in the uh, 90s. And when God broke out. And I've been to some of them. But let me tell you something. God wants to renew you. And He wants to just keep filling you up. Every service. Every time. Even when you're at home. Amen. Alone. God wants to come down and fall on you. And just uh, shake them. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. That was a powerful time in the Lord. And some of you feel a tug on your heart to get born again. If you feel that, repeat this after me. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come and live inside of me. Be the Lord of my life. I confess all my sins and I repent of them. Wash me with your blood, Jesus. Make me a new person, a new creature. Make the old person that I was be done away with in the name of Jesus. I confess and accept that you died on the cross, rose from the dead for me, and that you're the only way to heaven, Jesus. Write me in the book of life. And now that I'm born again, baptize me with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Some people got born again. Some people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some people got both. So I'm thankful for that. God is good and He's greatly to be praised. And I invite you. Now come on out to Revivals here at church. Sunday nights at 6.30. I'm the senior pastor. My name is Pastor Chan Smith. I encourage you to come out and dance in the river and uh, let God touch you. God has been doing great and powerful things. I mean, great testimonies. Glory, hallelujah. Whoo, glory, hallelujah. Go to facebook.com slash revival is here to like the Facebook page. Go to twitter.com slash revival is here M to like the Twitter page. I have weekly podcasts at revivalishere.org. You can donate to the ministry by going to donate.revivalishere.org. I encourage you to do that. Or you can mail your donations to Revivals Here, P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky 40006. I encourage you to do that. It takes money to do God's work. If you donate, we can expand into more areas. Glory, hallelujah. And come out to Revivals Here Church. You can get the location of that at revivalshere.org. Thank you, and God bless you in every way. Glory, hallelujah.